see, for you, for those of y'all who don't know, my name is Brother Ray. But we're coming to you today in the name of Jesus, which is the name of the Father, which is the name of the Son, which is the name of the whole family in heaven and earth. Is name. And today, today we're going to deal with a thing called the hope of eternal salvation. And the Lord put this on my mind, people, because it's getting late in the game. And, uh, yeah, just in one, two. It's getting late in the game, people, and it's time for us to step it up a little bit because time is getting short. And, you know, in this life, you got to do the best you can be, be the best you can be. But know that the hope and the reason why you're here on this earth is to get eternal life. And I'm going to tell you a secret. Everybody living, everybody that ever walked this earth is going to live forever. But where you're going to live is you going to determine that. And this is what the big secret is. Everybody that's ever been born is going to live forever. So you're going to get eternal life, but you want to get eternal life in the good side of the kingdom. So now, without any further ado, we're going to get into the scripture and we're going to see what the Lord say about this here because the Lord said there's uh, many ways, you know, in, in, a, in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord that you'll stand. And this is what we want to deal with. So we're going to start this in St. John, the sixth chapter. St. John, the sixth chapter. And y'all make sure y'all write these scriptures down or get the tape or whatever so you can go over it because this is most important for the servants of God. St. John 6, and we're going to start it at verse 39. St. John 6 and 39, we're going to see what the Bible says about this and hope of eternal salvation. Because this is what the Lord wants us to have, and this is what this is all about. He tells the Ecclesiastes 12, chapter, the last verse, that the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. When you get outside of that, you're operating in a gray and a dark area. But now, St. John 6 and 39, okay, my brother, what did it say? And this is the Father's will. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Bring him up, because I want, I want this brother to be heard above me, because he got that real word. And I know uh, we're watching the feed, right? Okay, start that again. And this is the Father's will, which have sent me, uh -huh. that of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing. Ain't that something? So whatever the Father gave Jesus, he ain't going to lose nothing. And we pray we be among those that the Father have given Jesus. But go ahead and read. But should raise it up again at the last day. Uh, I still got that harm. What is that? What is that? Do I need to come down? Are we feeding? Are we too close? Or what's going on? We good? Okay. 40. What did it say? And this is the will of him that sent me. What is his will that sent him? That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Oh, that's the Father's will? He want everybody that believe on him to have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. life. See, this is the big secret, people. This life you're living in right now is going to determine where you're going to spend eternity at. This ain't life here. Life ain't began yet. The life is on the way when the Lord returns. But where we at right now is going to determine where you're going to spend eternity at. But the Father will is, and Jesus will is, for you, that you love him, you believe in him, to have eternal life. Go ahead and read. And I will raise him up the last day. Oh, so when you die, immediately you don't just go to heaven, huh? He going to raise you up when? The last day. Last day. But now, uh, skip down to 44. What did that say? No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me draw him. Uh-huh. And I will raise him up at the last day. That's right. So when I see you sitting in here, I know that the Father have drawn you. And now our job is to get that word and see what the Father's will and what he want us to do. But you bless people. I know sometimes I walk around in this world, I be looking, I say, why, why did the Lord pick me out of all these people? Mm -hmm. But whatever it was, I'm glad. But now my job is to stay picked. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's our job. But what verse are you at? Skip 45. down to 47 and continue. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. he that believeth on me have everlasting life. Oh, what do you have? Yeah. If you believe on the Lord? It seemed like to me he's trying to drive a point home. If you believe in me, you're going to have everlasting life. And I ask you a question. What is in this world 
that you would give up everlasting life for in God's kingdom? What has got you so wrapped up and so twisted that you would pass on everlasting life in the kingdom of God? It reminds me of that man that asked Jesus. He said, look, master, what good thing must I do to have eternal life? Jesus told me, keep the commandments. He said, I've all this I've done from my youth up. And if he was lying, Jesus would have rebuked him. But he said, hey, if you're going to be perfect, sit all you have and follow me. But he walked away sad because he had great possessions, right? But you mean to tell me the Lord was giving you a shot to be in his kingdom? All you had to do was come? Man, you should have dropped everything mm -hmm. and be in the kingdom forever. But what had him? Material thing. That's why the Lord tells you in Matthew 13 about the parable of the sower. He said, those that fell among thorns, the riches and the cares of this world choked the word out of his heart mm -hmm. and it became unfruitful. Ain't that something? If the Lord tell me to drop what I got to follow him, it's dropped. I'm going to be so close to him. He's like, what would you? You said come with you. I'm coming. <laughs> and this is what the kind of attitude the servant of God got to have. But now, he said, if you believe in me, you're going to have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. I am that bread of life. Oh, he that bread of life. This is that bread that came down from heaven. And what do you do with bread, people? Eat it. You eat it. You don't set up on the top of the shelf and let that dust collect on it, do you? Yes, sir. You eat that bread. Go ahead and read. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness uh -huh. and are dead. Yes, sir, because that manna, it ain't going to give you eternal life. It's the sir. word of God that's going to do it. But go ahead and read. This is the bread which, com which cometh down from heaven uh -huh. that a man may eat thereof and not die. Oh, you can eat this bread and you won't die? Ain't that so? Go ahead and read. I am the living bread uh -huh. which came down from heaven. Go ahead. If any man eat of this bread, uh -huh. he shall live forever. Oh, so if you eat this bread, you're going to live forever. What kind of bread is this that you can eat and live forever, people? Go ahead and read. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, uh -huh. which I will give for the life of the world. Yes, sir. And people didn't understand. you. What do you mean he's going to give us his flesh? What is he talking about? But now, I want you to skip down to verse 63, and let's see what the Lord is trying to tell you. What bread is he talking about? Verse 63, go ahead and read. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Uh -huh. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Ain't that something? So the flesh, what is the flesh profit? Nothing. nothing. But the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. So if I say I'm full of the spirit of God, then what am I full of? Word. Word. If I'm full of the Holy Ghost, then what am I full of? Word. And if you say you're full of the Holy Ghost and I ask you, when is the Lord's Sabbath day? And you tell me Sunday, what are you full of? You do what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But the thing is, this is what we got to pay attention to, right? But now, let's go and run this down. Now, Jesus kept offering you what? Everlasting life. Everlasting. See, you got to know what you're doing this thing for. What is your motivation for getting up in the morning and serving God and keeping his command? What is your motivation of walking by $10 million on the table you know it ain't yours? Mm -hmm. But you keep on walking. It's that everlasting life. Because there ain't nothing in this earth, people, greater than the gift of God. And that's one thing you got to remember. But now, let's go a little further. Let's run it down. Let's see what the book says. Because the Lord said he would do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, right? So let's go to the wisest man that ever lived. Let's, he said, let's go to Proverbs, the first chapter. Proverbs, the first chapter. So we're going to take our time to deal with this. And before this lesson is over, you're going to be saying, boy, I'll be glad. I hope this brother don't come down here no more. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> but we're going to deal with some book before we get out of here today, I guarantee you. But now, Proverbs 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Proverbs 1. 1 and 23. Okay, go ahead. Turn you at my reproof. Uh-huh. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Uh-huh. I will make known my words unto you. Oh, so he going to pour what out to you? His spirit. His, his spirit. Words. And he going to make known his word. But you see how he used that spirit and his word interchangeably? Mm -hmm. So when somebody tells me I'm full of the spirit, I'm going to ask you something about the words. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know nothing, I know what you're full of. <laughs> but it's time for me to get my head and walk because I'm looking for somebody that's full of the spirit of God. Yes, how you feel and how Satan tried to stop me from getting there is, is irrelevant. What did the book say? But he said, I'm going to make known my words unto you. That, ain't that what it said? Mm -hmm. But keep reading now. 
because I have called uh -huh. and you refused. What you mean the Lord is calling and we refuse? He said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open unto me, I and the Father will come in and sup with him. Sup with you and what? He going to give you that bread so you can learn how to get eternal life. But he's not calling on you. I'm stretching my hand out to you. But what you're doing, you're refusing and walking away. Go ahead and read. I have stretched out my hand uh -huh. and no man regarded. How many men? No man. Boy, that's a bad record there. What happened to all these sanctified and holy people? Mm. Go ahead and read. But you have set at naught all my counsel. What does naught mean, people? Nothing. You set the counsel of the Lord and for nothing? Go ahead and read. And with none of my reproof. When none of my reproof. You don't want to be corrected. And the Lord said when a man can't be corrected, he's on the train to destruction. Or a woman. Go ahead and read. I also will laugh at your calamity. Oh, so when you get in trouble, was the Lord going to come and save you? What you going to do? He going to laugh at you. Because when he tried to get you, you laughed at him. That thing is more me to eye when he said you read what you saw. Mm. But go ahead and read, brother. I will mock when your fear cometh. Oh, he's going to laugh at you when your fear comes. When that great tribulation comes and they cutting off people's head, Lord, I'm going to laugh at you. Because I tried to warn you all the time. I even had a place where you can go and hide yourself, but you didn't want none of my reproof. You didn't want none of my counsel. Go ahead and read. When your fear cometh as desolation, uh -huh. and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Go ahead. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Go ahead. Then shall they call upon me, uh -huh. but I will not answer. And you know what's happening now? The Lord is letting this end time rise up more and more. And people are starting to tremble now. They're looking for the truth now. Because it's going to take dramatic to get everybody's attention because we've been on easy street too long. Yes, sir. You're going to break up that peaceful habitation and get you to come to the Lord. That's what this all is for. But keep reading, my brother. They shall seek me early, uh -huh. but they shall not find me. What? It's going to come a time when you're going to seek the Lord and ain't going to be able to find it. See, a lot of people don't. That's why you've got to hurry up and get this thing, people, because time is running out. It's going to give me a time. It's going to come a time when you're going to seek the Lord and you ain't going to be able to find him. Is that what we, you know, as I'm making this up, people? Read that. Go ahead and read, brother. For that they hated knowledge. That's what they did. Go ahead. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. Oh, they didn't choose. Because see, one thing the Lord made us a free agent. He said, this day I said before you life and death, good and evil, choose life and live that thou and thy seed may live. Because you ain't the only one right. You can make a decision and get your whole family cut off. Mm -hmm. That's how deep this thing is. But the Lord said, you didn't want none of my reproof. You didn't want nothing to do. That's why, how many people you talk, man, I don't want to hear that, man. I ain't got no time for that, man. I'm, I'm so and so. And, oh, that's what you in? You got it, brother. You got it. But keep reading. What, is, what the Lord said. They were none of my counsel. Uh -huh. counsel. They despise all my reproof. The, all of it? They mean they didn't take none of it? None of it. Go ahead and read. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. Yes, sir, because you going to eat what you so go ahead and read and be filled with their own devices uh-huh for the turning away of the simple shall slay them also when you turn away from the word of god what you gonna do kill yourself you you might as well commit suicide you turn away you slaying yourself go ahead and read and the prosperity of fools shall uh -huh. destroy them that's right so if you hit for 20 million dollars and you don't know the lord mm -hmm. guess what you can get ready to destroy yourself because you're gonna be like a mac truck out of control give me that give me two or three in here you, you spending money crazy mm -hmm. because you ain't got no governor on you to keep you in control go ahead and read but whoso whoso hearkeneth unto me shall uh -huh. dwell safely oh if you hearken to the lord you're gonna dwell safe no matter what's going on around you lord so i'm gonna keep you safe that's a, that's a beautiful promise there, ain't it? Mm -hmm. go ahead and read and shall be quiet from fear of evil that's right because we saying that prayer, Lord, deliver us from what? Evil. And do you know something? That evil that he's talking about is not everyday temptation. It's not everyday evil. It's talking about great tribulation. You're praying every day. Don't even know, Lord, keep me from great tribulation. Yes, A time that's going to come upon this earth like it never was before and it shall never be again. But now, let's see this time when you're going to look for the Lord and you ain't going to be able to find him. Let's go to Amos, the eighth chapter. This is what I love about the Bible, people. You just got to turn the page and get out of the way. And let the Lord do his thing. Amos 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Because I said, you mean to tell me it's going to come a time they're looking for the Lord and they ain't going to be able to find him? Mm. 
Oh, no. And what's so deep, the time is almost here, people. Almost here. I mean, I'm on the plane coming over here, man. People talking, talking, talking. I mean, just babbling. I can't wait till we get here because I'm tired of listening to <laughs> Ain't no knowledge. Everybody's talking foolish. I said, oh, Lord. Then the plane take a dip. It get quiet then. <laughs> get scared. I wonder what's wrong. Keep talking. I started to holler, but he probably would have kicked me off the plane. So, but now, 8 and 11, what did he say now? Behold, the days come, said the Lord God, uh, uh -huh. that I will send a famine in the land. Oh, a famine in the land? Go ahead. Not a famine of bread, uh -huh. nor a thirst for water, but, but what? Uh, hearing the words of the Lord. Ain't this so? It's going to come with that. It ain't going to be for bread. It ain't going to be for black, literal food. It's going to be for what? For the hearing of the words of God. This is the time when you're going to look for the Lord and ain't going to be able to find him. And you know what time it is? Doing great tribulation when you need him the most. Because yes, the people that know are going to be running. <laughs> All that time they try to talk to you and I'm running to, great, to get you the will and now you want to talk to me? I'll see you later. <laughs> I got to get out of here. But go ahead and read 12 verse now. And they shall wander from sea to sea. Are they going to go from sea to sea looking for it, huh? Go ahead. And from the north even to the east. Oh, no. Go ahead. They shall run to and fro to huh? seek the word of the Lord. They're going to seek the word of the Lord and what's going to happen? And it shall not find it. Now, what people, this is the book. This is the word of God. And the time is almost here. That's why there ain't no more time for shucking and jiving. This time is step up to the plate. But go ahead and read. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Hey, the Lord, it's the fair virgins, the young men, the old, the maids, and everybody. It's time to seek the Lord. That's what time it is. But now, but this is what the Lord is telling you. But now, let's go back to Proverbs, the third chapter. That's why we got to have that hope. We got one bullet left in the gun, people. You know what it is? It's the hope of salvation. Because if we don't get this, guess where we're going to go? If you ain't in the kingdom, what other place I wonder can you go? And I don't even like to talk about that place. Because I don't want no part of it. But now, Proverbs 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Let me get there, which I can't even find Proverbs. Proverbs 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Proverbs 3 and 16. Okay, brother, what does it say? Length of days is in her right hand. Oh, he talking about, what is he talking about? The word of God, the commandments, right? Wisdom. Length of days, so if you want to live long, the Lord telling you to do what? And get that wisdom. Keep reading. And in her left hand, riches and honor. Oh, that's what's in her left hand. This wisdom, the Lord refers to this woman, this uh, wisdom as being a woman. This is the woman that a man is supposed to be having an affair with. Wisdom and knowledge. Keep reading. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. Yes. And all her paths are peace. Yes, it is. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. She is what? Because this is the tree that the Lord wants you to eat from, from the garden. Because he's been trying to give you eternal life from the beginning. But we want eternal death. We'll walk right past the Lord and go eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And man is still eating from that tree to this day. But he said, she is a tree of life. Read that one more time. 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. Uh huh. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. And if you retain her, you're going to be happy now. Because you're going to be walking around. It's like you've got a big secret in your mind. And you're trying to share it with everybody, but don't nobody want to hear it. But go ahead and read a little bit more. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. Oh, that's how he did it? Go ahead. By understanding, have he established the heavens? And this is how you got to get it. If the Lord got to use wisdom and knowledge and understanding, what do you think we got to use? Flip over to Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and let's pick it up at verse 21. Because we're going to keep this thing moving. We're going to see what the Lord say about this in hope of eternal salvation. Proverbs 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Proverbs 4 and 21. Okay. Go ahead. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Uh-huh. But wait a minute. Back up. Because it's 20th verse. What did it say? My son, attend to my words. Uh-huh. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Oh, I'll climb your ear to the Dead Sea Scroll, mm -hmm. to the lost book, to the Quran. Mm -hmm. He said, incline your ear to my word. That mm -hmm. one is right in your lap. 
Go ahead and read. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Oh, don't let them depart. Go ahead. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. And your heart is your what, people? Go ahead and read. For they are life unto those that find them. Uh-huh. And health to all their flesh. Not only will it give you eternal life, it'll be some health to your flesh. If you sick sometime and you broke down with some kind of plague, read the book. Go on a fast or something because it, it helps to your navel and marrow to your bone. This is the medicine right here, people. Did you know that? That word is something now. Not only will it heal you spiritually, it'll heal you physically too. Because it's life is in that word, people. Go ahead and read. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Yes. For out of it are the issues of life. Out of it. Because if you've got that word in your mind, what's issuing out of your mind? The words of life. And the words of life will get you eternal life. But what if you don't have the word? What will it get you? Eternal death. It's just that simple. It ain't hard to understand. What verse did you stop at? 24. 24. Okay, let's go further. Let's see something about this word of life. Let's go to 1 John. Not St. John. 1 John, the first chapter. And this is what's so sweet about the book, people. There's no private interpretation. You got to let the book interpret the book. You don't have to make up no beautiful story. You don't have to go to the bookstore and get them little pamphlets to do some teaching. All you got to do is crack the book and read. Get you a cup of coffee and get busy. <laughs> Spend some time with God's word and you won't be the same again. Teach. First John, the first chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Pay attention to what you read now. Okay, go ahead. That which was from the beginning, uh -huh. which we have heard, uh -huh. which we have seen with our eyes, go ahead. which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the word of life. Oh, so what is you handling right now? The word of life. Because this is it, people. How many times have we got to read it before we believe? This is what you're looking at, the word of life. This is what your hand is handling. But read a little bit more. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it. Hey, we didn't know nothing about no eternal life until the Lord manifested it to us. Go ahead and read. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. We didn't know nothing about it. Jesus came to manifest it. Hey, you know something? You can have eternal life. You can be as God and live forever in my kingdom. He brought that on the table. We didn't know nothing about that. And you can get it. But don't let this world turn you away from the Lord. People. Don't turn your back on the word of God. Because I guarantee you, you're going to suffer. And I'm telling you the truth because I figure like this. If I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yes, sir. If you don't care nothing about me, hey, I'll lie to you all day long. But the Lord got something for me. And I don't want that. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because that's what the Lord wants us to do. But he said now, that life was with the Father, and Jesus came and brought it to us. Ain't that what we read? Yes, sir. But he said, our, handles, our hand have handled the word of life. Let's go over to Philippians right quick, the second chapter now. And see, this thing is so simple. People, a child can understand. Don't let no man beguile you from the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. This thing is simple. But you've got to read it. Don't let this world turn you around. See, Satan is so clever. That's why in Job 41, he told you, that, you know, one would think the deep to be hoary. Because when you think about Satan, you think about monsters and spider web and all. Uh-uh. Satan plays it laid out. Five, six in carpet. The best couch in it. The greatest drinking. Listen, I'm in Satan's house. You think you're in the Lord's house. Mm -hmm. You sitting right in the devil's living room and don't even know. Mm -hmm. You in a graveyard. And thinking you in a palace. Ain't this something? Mm -hmm. This is what, that's why you got to get wisdom, get knowledge, and get understanding. So you know, you people think because the church is big and it's got all this here. Ooh, I know the Lord is here. Yeah, he's here, but he's here to do some killing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because this is not the house of the Lord. It just is the way it is. Now, Philippians 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. 2 and 13. What the book said. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's right, because if you humble yourself to the Lord, he going to work in you to do good and to do his pleasure. Not my pleasure, his pleasure. Go ahead and read. Do all things without murmuring uh -huh. and disputing. And that's one thing Israel got to get away from. Mm -hmm. 
We the most murmurs and complaining people on the earth. Mm -hmm. Murmuring and complaining will get you cut off. Just do what you got to do. Don't say nothing. Don't back talk. Just do it. And you'll be blessed. But as soon as you start murmuring and complaining, because I'm going to let you in on secret paper, you may think that you deserve something for God. So if he got something for you to do, get up and do it. Why? You're able to. Go ahead and read. What verse you at now? 15. Go ahead. That ye may be blameless uh -huh. and harmless to the harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Yes, sir. Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. That's right. See, a lot of your preaching people is going to be in what you do. It ain't all the time opening the book and bringing out the spirit. It's how you walking on your job. How you walking in your household, around your neighborhood and stuff. People, you know, that, that brother and sister, that, I can't put my thing on them, but they're dealing with something else. I got to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Just about what you're doing. You see what I'm saying? Because you shine and light lights in a crooked and perverse generation. You stand out and you don't even know it. Ain't that something? But go ahead and read. And what makes you stand out the most? 16. Holding forth the word of life. Holding forth the what? The word of life. I mean, how many times do we got to read this thing before we believe? This is, you want life? You want to live forever? You got your book right in your hand. It yeah. shows you the way. If you follow it, you'll get it every time. If you got the map to go to California and they say go this way and you went that way, you ain't going to get to California. No matter what kind of car you drive. but Because you got to know where you're going, people. But now he said you handle it and you have the word of life. What verse you stop at, brother? Read that 16, 16. to get me one more time. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ uh -huh. that I have not run in vain neither labored in vain. You know how you can run in vain, people? What happened in Matthew, the seventh chapter? What them people said, Lord, did not we cast out devil? Didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? And he said, hey, get away from it. The works of iniquity, I never knew you. Because they never got the word, they never entered into a covenant of the Lord. So you got to get that baptism. See, the Lord is so wise. He'll show you a few things at first and let you know his word is true. But then it come a time when you got to make a covenant with him. And when you do, that's when the book says, when you repent and be baptized, then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's and true. what is the gift of the Holy Ghost? The understanding the of word. the word of God. That's the only way you're going to get to. You got to make that commitment. But now, what verse are you at? 17. Let's go a little further now. Let's go to uh, Luke 18. And I don't care where we find the people that don't never change. This is what makes it so beautiful. But if you get into this word, you be so Right, with the Lord and church. I be looking myself sometimes this word the Lord opens up so tough. I close the Bible up. I go back in the room. Lord, this, you showing me too much now. I don't want to take me to scare to me a little slow. I can't handle all this. It's something. It's God's word, people. You think I'm lying? You just take some time out to read. And I'm talking about spend some time and don't fool yourself. I run the cat. Man, I really get down. I said, yeah, you been reading tough. He said, yeah, what you do? Now, I done knocked out about three verses in two months. I said, man, get out. You ain't reading no Bible. Yeah. Three verses in two months. <laughs> what you trying to do? You know what I'm saying? Right hey, you got to spend some time with this book. You got to cut off L.A. hot wives. You got to get rid of that foolishness. <laughs> Throw the remote away. Get, <laughs> and get your book and start reading it, people. Ain't no better way to spend your time. You talking about your board, you know, you walking around the house, ain't, ain't nothing to do. Get your book and read it. You'll be surprised what you might find. Just check it out. You think I'm lying? Check it out. Luke 18 and 28, people. Luke 18. I ain't telling you something somebody told me. I know I did it for myself, people. Luke 18 and 28. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Oh, that's a good question now. What is we humbling and obeying ourselves for? Peter said, look, we're going to let all and follow you, Lord. What, what we going to do? I think that's a good question. Let's see what he said. Go ahead and read. He said unto them, verily I say unto you, uh -huh. there is no man that have left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, uh -huh. who shall not receive men manifold more in this present time uh -huh. and in the world to come, life everlasting. What? He said, you can receive more in this life, but in the next life, you're going to receive what? Life everlasting. Because this is what it's all about. But the Lord will bless you even now. 
This is how sweet this thing is. And he said, hey, some of y'all, hey, you got to leave your house, your parents, your brother, your wife, your children. Sometimes you have to do. Sometimes a man of God has got to go a little further. And I want to be out there by myself because I don't want my wife to be in danger. This is a dangerous thing we're dealing with. Yes, it is. And believe me, once they start shooting and stuff at me, she ain't going to want to be there. You go ahead, baby. Take care of the business. I'll be right here waiting on you when you get back. <laughs> but the thing is, though, the Lord said, I'll give you more in this life and everlasting life in the world tomorrow. Ain't that beautiful, bro? Yes, sir. That's a beautiful promise. And the Lord will be right there with you. But you know, if a brother got a wife, that is a daughter of God. When he get through with the work of the Lord, you know what she's going to be when he get back? Right there and on. Waiting on you. I've been waiting on you, baby. I know that's why I came straight home, girl, because I miss you so much. <laughs> but this is the way it's supposed to be. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, but sir. what verse you stop at now? 31. 31, read it. What did it say? Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Yes, sir. All things written by the prophets. Because everything got to be fulfilled by the prophets. But this is the thing. If you serve God and do his will, the Lord says, I'll bless you more in this life and everlasting life to come in my kingdom. Now, what in the world are you doing that's going to be that? I want to know. I want to see it. Because I know that it don't exist. Acts 2. And let's go to 2. Acts 2 and 37 now. But these are the things a servant of God must know. These are the kind of scriptures you got to read when you get a little weak sometimes. Mm. As you go far, it's going to be some time to get weak. It's going to be some time. Because you know what? No matter how much knowledge you got, no matter how much wisdom, that call of the wild is still calling your name. <laughs> Come on and out here. Come on back into the world. I can't come. You hurt me too bad. Can't go back. Acts 2 and 37. What did he say? Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their in their uh, heart. Because they had found out that they had killed the Lord. They finally, we, we did what? And they wanted to know what could they do to be forgiven of it. And let's see what he told them. Go ahead. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, uh -huh. what shall we do? What shall we do? How can we be forgiven of this? What did Peter tell them? Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Uh -huh. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's what it is. We quoted it earlier, but I wanted you to read it for your own life. You got to repent. And what does repent mean? Have a change of mind. You got to stop walking that way. You got to walk this way. Because if I keep walking this way, I'm going to be destroyed. And I'm liable to destroy my whole household. Because he say no. That if you want to tear a man's household down, you got to first buy him strong. If you buy him, he'll tear your crib apart. You hear what I'm saying? That's why it's so important for a man to stand on this word of God. But now, what did he say? 39. For he the, sending us a message. Keep reading. For the promise is, is unto you uh -huh. and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And he calling you, people. He calling you. But whether you're come or not, it's you between you and God. But keep reading now. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, uh -huh. saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Oh, who got to save yourself? Yourself. You got to save yourself. And how did you do that? Stop walking in sin and start walking in righteousness, following the law. And you know what you're doing? You're saving yourself. Ain't that something? Yes, but you got to do it because the Lord made us a free agent. He ain't going to force you to serve him and he ain't going to stop you. But if you're trying to serve you, he'll assist you and he'll help you along the way. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. But you got to make the choice. It's laid before you. But now, let's go and see the Lord and gave us a beautiful thing with that baptism. Let's go see what it is. Let's go to Romans, the third chapter now. Romans 3. This is what's so beautiful about this thing, people. And a lot of people don't know because the preachers ain't preaching. And I believe if a lot of them knew they would come to the Lord. They'll understand why I got why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because the Lord will let you know. Because he's a God of light and understanding. He is not a God of darkness. He don't want his servants to be in the dark. He wants you to know what's going on. Why am I serving the Lord? Or to get eternal life. But where you gonna be when you get it? In God's kingdom, right there in Jerusalem. 
even got a chance to sit on the throne with the Lord and to be as God. Now, why are you going to church on Sunday? <laughs> and you'll see it get real quiet. But now, Romans 3, and let's see this blessings that the Lord gave us by that baptism. Romans 3 and 23, what did it say? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No, 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 that can't be right. Now, some of us is clean, right? Nah. The book said all have sinned. How absolute is all? Go ahead and read now. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, he justified you with grace, and grace is a gift. gift. What did you do to get this beautiful calling from God? Not right. a doggone thing. It was what? A gift. The Lord justified you. Go ahead and read. Whom God has set forth to be a propi propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Oh, so when you get baptized, it's for the remission of sins that are what? Your past sin. And that's what's beautiful about it because no matter what you done did, no matter what atrocities you done committed, mm -hmm. when you get that baptism, your slate is wiped clean. Ain't that beautiful? Yes, sir. No matter what, I mean, I, don't, I almost said that's something I shouldn't have. But whatever you did, slate is wiped clean. That's beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. You can repent and you can turn to the Lord and he'll receive you. Ain't that something? But keep reading. Through the forbearance of God uh -huh. to declare I say at this time his righteousness yes sir that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus that is right and he gonna justify him that what to believe in Jesus for keep reading now maybe we don't boast we got this thing we can stop both man I'm his right I'm, I'm one of the kings and the priests but keep reading 27 what did it say where is boasting then? It's gone. Go ahead. It is excluded. Uh-huh. By what law? Go ahead. Of works? Uh-huh. Nay, but by the law of faith. Because you didn't need nothing to work your way in this thing. It's by faith. You believe it. Go ahead and read. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith uh -huh. without the deeds of the law. See, people read this. See, you ain't got to have the deeds of the law. You ain't got to keep the command. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. That's what's justifying. That's what's keeping you. That's what's showing everybody you serving God. But keep reading. Is he the God of the Jews only? No. Go ahead. Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes. Yes, of the Gentiles also. He's the God of all men. And he said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is what the God of this Bible said. I'm talking about the real Jesus. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read now. Seeing it is one God. How many gods is it? One God. How many ways is it serving? One way. Go ahead and read. Which shall justify the circumcision by faith. The circumcision is Israel, but go mm -hmm. ahead. And the uncircumcision through faith. And this is all other nations. But do, what did he message he left with at this 31 verse? What did he say? Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Uh-huh. Yeah, we establish the law. Because that's how you show the Lord that you got it, faith, faith. by keeping, keeping the law. his law. He that say he loved God and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the, the truth, truth is not in him. This is what the book said. But now, let's go to Acts 9, people. See, we got this blessed hope. Don't let nobody take that from you. See, they try to take that hope away from you when they say, look here, you're going to heaven. No, no. You ain't going to heaven. Ain't nobody going to heaven. Woman told me, ain't you going to heaven? I said, no, and you ain't neither. <laughs> and she got mad at me, didn't want to hear nothing else. But I told her, too. You ain't going, and neither am I. But now, Acts 9. Acts 9, and we're going to pick it up. At verse 11 now, Acts 9 and 11. We're going to see what the Lord said about in this hope of eternal salvation. Acts 9 and verse 11. Okay. Pay attention, people. Stay with me. Stay with me. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord said unto him, uh -huh. Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight. Go ahead. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul uh -huh. of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. Right. Now see, Paul was praying because he was a Pharisee before he was converted to the truth. And he was doing some deadly things. But the Lord wanted him to be his servant. It's like we be out there before we come to the Lord, we be doing something of everything. But the Lord, it came a time. Go down there and get that sister. Get that brother. I got some work for them to do. Twelve verse. Go ahead and read. I have seen in a vision a man named Ananias uh -huh. coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Right, because see, when Paul was on the way back from Damascus, the Lord shined that light and blinded him. And he told him to go see Ananias, and then when he seen Ananias, 
some shells fell off his eye. And just like when you come to the word of God, you're blind as a bat. But once you hear that truth, and me too, once I heard that truth, guess what? Things fell off our eyes like shells. And you can see. I said, look at me. Would you look at that? But, but the thing is now, but pay attention now. 13th verse, what did it say? Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man uh -huh. how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. That's right. See, that's why the Lord had to take Paul off in Arabia and teach him by himself because Paul had been killing so many of the saints that people wouldn't trust him. He said, man, I can't be that. That dude is a killer. Mm -hmm. He kills the saints. He specializes in killing the saints. The Lord, he asked the Lord, are you sure you got the right guy? He said, but look what the Lord told him. Keep reading. And here he have authority from the chief priest to uh, bind all that call on thy name. Ain't that something? He coming back with authority. If they call on your name, get them. And do you know I got a thing on my phone now that the Pope have said. The reason why all of the disasters and the destruction is in the earth today because it's a select few that's keeping the weekly Sabbath day on Saturday instead of Sunday. And he said we need to gather all these people and kill every last one of them because they are ministers to society. Ain't that something? I got it on my phone right now. Because the Pope got this thing come on Sunday morning called a Vatican perspective or something. You see what I'm saying? And they putting that out right now. And that's an old, some old footage. But it was the same thing in Paul Day. He was going to kill the saints, had authority by the high priest. But let's see what happened now. Go ahead and read. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Uh-huh. To bear my name before the Gentiles. Go ahead. And the kings and the children of Israel. So Paul was supposed to talk to the Gentiles and to the kings and to the children of Israel. But he was a way wicked dude killing the saints of God before the Lord converted him. And let me know the Lord can bring you from any place if he wants you to do his will. Because a lot of us came from some bad places. I know I did, people. I never thought one time that I would be somewhere teaching about the word of God. Where I come from. But who knows what the Lord got for you up the road. But the thing is, Paul was the same way. I'm not in no uh, kind of uh, manner like Paul was, but hey, I came from a bad place. That's all I'm saying. But now, 16th verse, what did it say? For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And you notice that nobody suffered like Paul. You know why? Because he killed so many of the saints and he had to pay for that. See, sometimes the Lord will forgive you, but he's still going to exact that pound of flesh from you. You know, you got a bad little kid, you know, I'm going to let you go. I ain't going to get rid of you, but I'm going to make you pay for what you've done. But he won't destroy you. Uh, 17, what did he say? And Ananias went his way uh -huh. and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight uh -huh. and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because when you repent and be baptized, what the Lord fill you with, people? That word. But he said, look here, the Lord has chosen you now. He's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost because he got big things to do. But what happened to Paul once he told him that? 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight for, for forthwith uh -huh. and arose and was baptized. Ain't that something? But what fell from his eyes? Scales. And that's what falls from your eyes when you come from the truth, people. You say, now nah, I can see. And when you talk to somebody that can't see this plain, simple word, you know, I know what's wrong with you. You got them scales on your eyes. Mm. And you can't see. But you know what? But people say, you know, but Paul made a statement. Used to really confuse me, but then the Lord gave me some understanding. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12 now. I want y'all to pay attention to this and see, can you catch this? Put on your spiritual thinking camera. You're supposed to have them on when we first started. I didn't want to say nothing. But look at 2 Corinthians 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. This is what got me here. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 6. Okay. Still hit some pages, turn. Okay, go ahead. For though I would desire to glory, uh -huh. I shall not be a fool. Because anytime you're out there glowing in yourself, oh man, I'm so wise, I just, you know, I can't hardly breathe because I'm so smart. <laughs> hey, you ain't nothing but a fool. But go ahead and read. For I will say the truth. Uh huh. But now I forbear, lest any man should drink of me, should think. think of me above that which he seeth me to be, uh -huh. or that he heareth of me. That's right. You see, don't never think of no man above what he is. 
I'm talking about even Brother Bowie, dynamic brother, doing big work for the Lord. But remember one thing, he's a man and not God. I know Brother Bowie told me a long time ago, he said, Ray, it's not my fault because people make me a God in their own mind. I'm a servant of God. And I took that to heart. Don't never make a man more than what he is. And he can make a mistake. He can fall. Some people see you do something wrong. Oh, man, they walk out of the word. No, that ain't the word. It's me. The word is straight. You got to keep that on your mind. But go ahead and read now, seventh verse. Unless I should be exalted above measure uh -huh. through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Uh -huh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Go ahead. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Ain't that so? Now the Lord gave Paul so much revelation in this word that he had to put a, a Satan on him. A buff. What was a buffet in Satan's flesh? Uh, in Paul's flesh. What was it? Who could tell? Yes. Who what? What was it? Oh, the blindness. Couldn't see, right? Boy, you were poor and don't even know it. That's it. But I'm going to show it to you. And this is how you know. But look here. He said, but why did Satan, you know, sometimes this is where that flesh is. If the Lord give you too much, he got to put a governor on you. You know why? Because you're going to think you're more than what you are. Mm -hmm. So he put a governor on his flesh. Paul spoke seven different languages. He talked to all kinds of people, the kings, the Gentiles, Israel. I mean, this brother was dynamic. You hear what I'm saying? But the Lord had that governor on him. And he was his eyes, and we're going to show you. But he so he found this out, eighth verse. Keep reading. For this thing I besought, besought the Lord thrice, uh -huh. that it might depart from me. Ain't that something? He asked the Lord three times, Lord, take this thing off me. But what did the Lord tell him? And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, uh -huh. for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Ain't that something? So the Lord know when he done lifted you up and gave you that wisdom, he put a little government to keep you humble. Because through weakness, that's when his strength is. So when you're at your weakest point, that's when the Lord going to step in you and really work with you. Ain't that something? It ain't for you to get up. Get back in the game. Get up. Get back in the race. This is what he let you know. Keep read. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities uh -huh. that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes, sir, because I'm glory in my infirmities because the power of Christ may rest upon me. So when you're going through things in this life, you're being chastised, you're being tried, don't quit, don't give up. The Lord is trying to strengthen you. Go ahead and read. Therefore, I take pleasure in, in, in infirmities. What, when you're in trouble, you're taking pleasure? Go ahead and read. In reproaches. Uh-huh. In necessities. Go ahead. In persecutions. Uh-huh. In distresses for Christ's sake. Yes, sir, in necessities. Hey, when, they, when they, get, the food get low and I can't pay my light bill, who would I call? Lord, keep reading. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And that's one thing you got to remember, people. But let's see what it was that had the Lord buffeted Paul with. Let's go to Galatians, the fourth chapter. Because we like to let you read the people. We don't want you to be out here. We want you to know what the Lord said. I'm going to see, can you see? And I ain't going to say nothing. Uh, Galatians 4, and we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Galatians 4, 14, and 15. Galatians 4, 14, and 15. Is everybody with me? Okay, go ahead. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, you despised not. Uh, see, Paul, you didn't despise me because I couldn't hardly see. You didn't look down on me. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and read. Nor reject it, uh -huh. but receive me as an angel of God, uh -huh. even as Christ Jesus. Go ahead. You know, ain't, no, ain't nobody going to let no blind dude come through and tell him nothing. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, get out of the way, man. But keep, keep, keep reading. What did he say now? Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? Uh -huh. For I bear you record that if, if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and, and, get, and, excuse me, and have given them to me. Ain't that something? Because it was his eyes. Because his sight never get that right when that thing fell off his eye. But the Lord did it to keep him humble. I can speak different languages, seven different languages. I'm talking to everybody, but I can't hardly see. Even the letters that he wrote, it was by somebody else's hand. He made a statement one time that uh, this letter here I've written by my own hand. And let me know all the other letters was written by somebody else. Because what was wrong with it? His eyes. He said, y'all love me so much to where you would have plucked out your own eyes. Why are you going to pluck your eyes out and give it to me for? It's because something is wrong with mine. It's just that something. But this is what it was. 
Lord, put that on because Lord know you need a governor because he'll have to destroy you if he give you too much. If he drop all his wisdom and knowledge in your head and you walk around with all that power, he'll have to hurt you, man, because you will be destroying. You'll be working for the devil and not the Lord. But the time come when you need it. That's why he said when he deliver you up to the magistrates, don't take no thought what you're going to say or what you're going to speak. Because it's not you that's speaking, but the spirit of your father that dwelleth in you. Yes, sir. See, these are the things the servant of God has got to know. But you've got to read the book. Because these are the words of eternal life. You hear what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. This is what we got. And Jesus gave it for you and can't nobody take it from you but you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 chapter now. 1 Corinthians 4. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 18. We're looking at this hope of eternal life. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 18. Okay. Go ahead. I thank my God. Uh -huh. I speak with tongues more than you all. And you know, there's a lot of people out there speaking in tongues. They tell me you ain't got the Holy Ghost unless you can speak in tongues. <laughs> And uh, I asked him, well, look, speak uh, three words to Hebrew with to me. He told me, you got to speak Hebrew to, uh, you ain't got the Holy Ghost and you ain't. I said, well, give me three words. Say toilet paper in Hebrew. <laughs> they can't even say it. But let's see what the Lord says about John, by the mouth of Paul. Go ahead and read. Yeah, in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also. Uh than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Ain't that so? He rather speak five words with understanding because understanding is everything, people. Get wisdom and get knowledge, but with all I give you, get what? Because it's everything. But go ahead and read now. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Uh -huh. How be it in malice, be you children. Right. But in understanding, be men. And this is what it's all about. Hey, be be children in malice. You look at children, they, they get mad at each other. They fight for a little while. Two minutes later, they playing like nothing ain't happening. No problem, no grudges, none of that. That's the way we supposed to be. But in understanding, he wants you to be men. And women, he wants you to know what you're doing with his word. Don't guess, don't speculate. But now, 21, what did he say? In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. Uh huh. And yet for all that will they not hear me. Ain't that something? Say it to the Lord. Hey, and me. that's what I tell them. I don't care how many tongues you speak. You can speak to the people in another tongue or another language. They still ain't going to listen. Because you know why? They don't want the word of God until they lie depend on it. You know, just like these cats living way up north in their rich houses and everything. Crime happening in the ghetto real tough. Breaking in the houses. Home invasion and everything. Wait, someone says, no, it'll, it'll, it'll pass. It's not too bad. But once they start climbing over your fence, then you get concerned. We've got to do something about it. Hey, you should have did something about it a long time ago. But now when they come over your backyard, now you're ready to get out. But see, this is the way it is. But uh, 22, and let's go further. What did he say? Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Our tongues are for a sign to who? Not to them that believe. Oh, it's not to them that believe, but who is it for? But to them that believe not. Oh, so that's what tongues is for, for the non-believe. But if you believe, you don't need no tongue. You need prophecy. You need to understand what you're doing. Go ahead and read. But prophesying serves not for them that believe not, uh -huh. but for them which believe. And this is what it is, people. But that understanding is everything. But now, let's go to Titus, the third chapter. See, these are the things we must know, people. And once you know this thing, the more understanding you get, it's going to make you a more better servant. Because you know what you're fighting for now. It's like you be a job, you job, you hate your job. You ain't getting paid enough money to work you to death. And they're talking crazy to you. He said, man, I can't stand it. But that motivation is that Friday. You're going to pick up that check. You can bear one more week, can't you? And this is what the Lord is letting you know. But now, Titus 3 and verse 6. Titus 3 and 6. Okay. Titus 3 and 6. I'm waiting on you. 3 and 6. This is what got me here. This is what the servant of God must know. Three and six. What did it say, brother? Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Right. He shed his blood and that word of God. Keep reading. That being justified by his grace, uh -huh. we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Because we got that hope. 
Don't let nobody take that hope away, especially not you. You got that hope, people. I tell the people all the time, man, I got one bullet in my gun. I got to hit the target this time, man. I can't miss this one. I blowed a lot of things in my life, but this is one thing I cannot blow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't blow this one. Go ahead and read. This is a faithful saying. Uh-huh. And these things I will, I will that thou affirm constantly. That's right. See, we're supposed to be telling each other this constantly. Don't give up, brother. Don't give up, sister. Hang on in there. It's going to be all night. Just believe in God. Go ahead and read. That they which have believed in God uh -huh. might be careful to maintain good works. Oh, if you believe in God, you're going to do what? Go ahead. These things are good and profitable unto men. Let's see what I'm saying? This is what profit. This is what profit is. Good work. Because the more good work you have, the better your chances. See, the books, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You will be glad because you made it. You'll be jumping up and down crazy. <laughs> what? Can I come in? Look here. I'm, in here. I'm gonna be jumping so high, you're gonna think I'm a basketball player. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Sir. But this is what it is. This is what we're running this race. So be careful to maintain good work. You see what I'm saying? Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter now. We just hit these little things. Seems like it don't mean nothing, but it means everything when you put the scripture together. That's why the Lord said you got to deal with it here a little, there yeah. a little, line upon line. Pre and then when you put all the precepts together, you line them up, you got a big picture on what God is saying. That's what it is. It's clear as a bell. Don't never think you can't understand. This is one of the most simplest books in the world to read. People say, well, I can't read that, man. It's, it's to D and the. Now, you know what D is and the. <laughs> if I say I'm finna hit D and the, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But you but you don't know what's going on. But this is this is another excuse to not read. But now, Philippians 3 and verse 10, what does it say now? 3 and 10. What does it say? That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. Because that's what we're trying to get, that first resurrection, people. Go ahead and read. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, we got to be partakers of that, too. We got to go through a little something, huh? Go ahead. Being made conformable unto his death. That's right. He conformed us and to his family, getting his mind so we can be God. But keep reading. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Ain't that something? Ain't that what we're trying to attain to? Go ahead and read. Not as though I had already attained. That's right. You can't walk around here talking about I'm saved. You were saved from what? <laughs> this trouble ain't even started yet. Yeah. You talking about you saved. Yeah. Hey, I ain't telling myself to, to have appertained. I made it already, but I'm on the right road and I got to endure until what? That's when I'm going to attain. Keep reading. Either we're already per perfect. No, you ain't perfect because when you're perfect, guess what you is, people? God. Go ahead and read. But I follow after, uh -huh. if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended for of Christ Jesus. That's right. This is why I keep stroking every day, every time. It get a little rough on me, but I get right back up and get in again. Just like that job, Lord, show you a physical thing for a natural thing, a natural thing for a spiritual thing. You don't want to get up and go. You be hard. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sick of these poor people. But, hey, you get up and go. Because you know you're going to want to eat some of them steaks a little later on in the week. <laughs> you got to go get that cheese. But go ahead and read. 13. Go ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. That's right. He don't probably want to I'm saved. I've made it already. Go ahead and read. But this one thing I do. Uh-huh. Forgetting those things which are behind. Yes, sir. Let that go. Go ahead. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. That's right. I remind me of a parable in Matthew when he said, uh, it, uh, a kingdom of heaven is like to a man. That find a treasure in the field. Sold everything. And once he found it, he sell all that he has and buy that treasure. And that's what you're supposed to do when you get this true word of God. Throw away everything that you thought you knew about the Lord. And start as a newborn baby. And let the Lord grow you up with his word. And so you can take it back. Because have you ever thought about who is going to stand up in your family now? And this is what pleased me so much when I look out in the audience here. I see the brothers with their children and everything. That's, that's what I want to see. Because that's a man's job to stand up and teach his own children. Who going to stand up in your family? Who going to warn big mama? You're going the wrong way, mama. And she going to kick when you tell What? I've been doing this every day. Hey, mama, I don't want to hear that. Get your book and I'm going to show you what the Lord said. I mean, me and my mama went toe to toe and my dad. I mean, every week, man. And it was, it got rough on me. I didn't want I hated to do that. But my love for him was more greater than that. And then I looked around and he was at that Israel getting yes, back sir. there. 
Friends, you know. You hear what I'm saying? Because, but that's what love will do for you, bro. That's what it'll do. But now, stop that 13 and bring me down, man. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Uh huh. But this one thing I do. Go ahead. Forgetting those things which are behind. Uh huh. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Go ahead. I press toward the mark. Uh huh. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Because I got to keep pressing until I get there. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't. Don't let nothing knock you off your spot. I don't care what it is. Keep rolling. Go ahead. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect. Uh huh. Be thus minded. Go ahead. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, uh -huh. let us walk by the same rule. Uh -huh. Let us mind the same thing. And this is what we're supposed to be doing. Everybody's supposed to be doing the same thing. No big eyes, no little you. We try to get to one place. It's only big, one big eye, and that's Jesus. Yes, sir. And the Father. You hear what I'm saying? And other than that, we are all children of God, and we trying to be. But now, let's go, let's go to 1 Corinthians 9. Y'all ain't getting tired on me, is you? Yes, sir. I ain't got nothing about 78 more scriptures, so we'll just be cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm just jacking. Well, that's supposed to look at me, what? <laughs> no, I ain't got that many. But we got a little bit of road, road to travel. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 9 and 23. I know when uh, Brother Daniel came to pick me up from the airport, he recognized me, I recognized him. He looked at me and was like, it, it, was you the guy that they sent down here? I said, I'm, I'm the one. <laughs> you know what I'm but hey, once we got kicking that book, he knew I was the guy. You know what I'm saying? But hey, the servants of God are going to know because we got that same spirit. That's right. But now, 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 23, what does it say now? And this I do for the gospel's sake. Oh, this is why we're doing all this for what? Gospel's sake. And what is the gospel? Coming of the kingdom. Boy, y'all, I see somebody been listening to the Lord. But keep reading now, but I should say somebody listen to the Lord. Yes, sir. Read. That I might be partaker thereof with you. That's right. We all trying to get this thing together. Go ahead. Know you not that they which run in, in a race run all. That's right. You run all. See, people think that uh, the world teaches how self got you deceived that when you find out about the Lord, you repent and be baptized, then you save. You can relax then. No, no, that's when the race starts. That's just the beginning. That's not you got to run after the Lord. But what do you do? You run around your house three times a day? No. You Starting run line. after the Lord in the scripture through wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You don't quit running until you get everything you need to get you to that king. If somebody told you, look here, man, there's $15 million out there in the yard. You ain't going to take a couple of shelves and say, man, I, I couldn't find it. If you know it's out there for real, you gonna dig. I look up, all I see is dirt. I don't even see you <laughs> until you find it. And this is what you got, baby. But go ahead and read now. What did it say? But one receiveth the prize. Only one gonna receive it. That means you gonna receive it if you run. Go ahead and read. So run that you may obtain. Yes, sir. Cause we ain't obtained it yet. We got to keep running. Go ahead. And every man that striveth for the mastery, uh huh, is temperate in all things. That's temperate. That means you got some control. You ain't out of control. You know what you're doing. Go ahead and read. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. That's right. That's just running Olympics. No, that's for a corrupt, corruptible crown. Mm -hmm. We ain't working for no corruptible crown. We're working for the crown of eternal life. Go ahead and read. But we an incorruptible. So what would we do? I therefore so run. Uh-huh. Not as uncertainly, so fight. Uh-huh. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. That's right. You ain't they people on Sunday at the church, they doing that. They beating the air. They don't know what they serving God for. But we ain't like that, people. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I know exactly where I'm going. Because the word have told me. Go ahead and read. But I keep under my body. Uh-huh. And bring it into, into subjection. Yes, sir. You got to keep that flesh in subjection because it'll get away from you, people. Yes, will. You got to watch that flesh. Like I heard Brother Boyd say one time, it really blow my mind. He said, hey, you looking for the devil? Look in the mirror. Yes, sir. I said, not, not in the mirror. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Because you are your own worst enemy. You are the one. But keep reading. Go ahead and read. Lest that by any means, uh -huh. when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And man, I can't have that, man. <laughs> After you done preached a thousand, then you got to go to the lake of fire. Uh-uh. No, no. I got to see this thing all the way through. This is one thing I tell you. I got to take to the end, people. I told my old lady, I said, I'm going to the kingdom. What you going to do? <laughs> She said, I'm going too. I said, well, get down. Let's roll. <laughs> ain't, ain't no time for no diving. You hear what I'm saying? 
because we got some road to travel. But now, let's go to Hebrews 6 now. Because now we got to get off in some deep water a little bit, people, now. Because when you get this thing, you can't turn back. The Lord showed you Lot's wife. She still had that Sodom and Gomorrah in her mind. Mm -hmm. Lord said, when you leave out of here, don't turn back. But that thing was still in her mind. She turned into a pillar of salt. And salt had to, I mean, say, uh, Lot had to keep rolling. Yeah. He couldn't even look back at her. Dang, she must have turned to some salt. I got to, <laughs> he, he got to keep moving, man. And vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Vice versa. I hate to say it, people, but that's what it comes down to. Ain't no need to drive with this thing. Put it on the table and keep eating, people. Look here, Hebrews 6 now. And let's pick it up at verse 4. What did it say? Now, this, this is what killed me here. This is what scares me straight. Hebrews 6 and 4, what did it say now? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. How do you get the Holy Ghost, people? Word. And when you repent and be baptized, right? Mm -hmm. So that means you're entered into a covenant okay. with the Lord. And that's why the Lord hurt us so bad when we married. And make you enter into a covenant with your spouse. Will you take your lovely, lonely song and so the video? I will. But well, what about this? I will. In sickness and in health, I will be right there. And in three, three weeks, you go. But the Lord going to get you for that because you, you broke the covenant. And anytime you break the covenant, you're going to suffer. I don't care who you is. You got to go back and make it right. If you can, but sometimes it's too late. But you got to play. But I tell you, you can't keep making covenant after covenant after covenant after covenant. Can't do it. Look, pay attention to what you're doing. But he said, now, nah, see that word impossible. You know, only time I like to see that is when I'm watching that movie. Mission impossible. <laughs> but not when it comes to the Lord and his word. You mean to tell me I can't get back if I turn away? This is some big talk here. Impossible for those who were once in life. Go ahead, brother. And have tasted the good word of God. You taste what you're tasting is that bread that the Lord left on the table. Go ahead and read. And the powers of the world to come. Uh-huh. And they shall fall away Go ahead. to renew them again unto repentance, uh -huh. seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh. What? Go ahead. And put him to an open shame. People, you know, how can you kill God afresh? You know how you do it? Keep breaking the law. When you repent and be baptized, the Lord is putting his spirit on you. You are starting your way on becoming God, and Christ is being formed in you. You are becoming more like Christ every day, the more you read. And when you fall away, you'll be just like killing him all over again. And the Lord said, you won't escape from that. That's what he's talking about in Revelation when he said, they're going to look upon me who may have fear. The people that fears God is going to come up to the judgment. But who are these that's looking on the Lord when he returns? These people that's living. These are people that have fell away from the Lord. You're going to look upon me who you have fear. Because Christ is being formed in you. You have crucified. Read that verse again. Am I reading that right? Read that sixth verse. What did it say? And they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Uh-huh. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh. What does afresh mean? Yeah. That means something's happening right now. Go ahead. And put him to an open shame. And just and you think you're going to escape from that, people? That's why the Lord give us good advice when he said, He that shall endure unto the end. Because we got to go. We got to get to the end, people. We can get it. It ain't hard. Just keep. Because see, look here. You stay with the Lord. He's going to be right there. He tell you all over the book, I keep the feet of my saints. I'm not going to let one of your hairs of your head fall through the ground. If you just believe, the Lord can get you through. But you got to believe. You got to believe. But a verse, what did he say? Verse 8. But that which it bear thorns and briars is rejected. Uh -huh. And it's nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. And people, I don't want to be burned. But keep reading. This is what's so beautiful about the Lord. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. That's right. So we ain't concentrate on that leg of fire. We are concentrate on the better thing. And what is it? Go ahead and read. And, and things that accompany salvation. Yes, sir. Though we thus speak. Uh-huh. For, for God, why? For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that you have mis and, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Ain't that beautiful? 
The Lord is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love that you have shown toward him. And hey, all the time the labor of your work is not here at the rock. Sometimes it's cooking for the feet. Sometimes it's teaching the children. Sometimes it's working on a building like this where people can come down and get fed the word of God. But whatever you do, do it. That's why the Lord said, don't complain. Do it with all your might. Because your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Did you hear me talking? Mm -hmm. But you got to know this here. The Lord said he will not forget it. And that's what's so beautiful. But now, skip down to verse 20 and continue. What did he say? Verse 20. Whether, whether the forerunner is for us entered. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 17 and continue. Verse 17. Yes. We're in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immu immutability of his counsel. Uh-huh. Confirm it by an oath. That's right, because see, you know, the oath is not in form unless one day. So when Christ died, that's what locked everything down. But go ahead and read. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. So that's one thing that it's impossible for God to do is lie, and the other thing is, is to die. You can't do those things. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. We might have a strong consolation. Yes, we do. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. And what are we going to do, people? Are you laying hold on the hope that's set before you? Or are we going to throw this last chance in the God? Because Jesus ain't going to come and die for you no more. We got one more shot. One shot. We can't blow this people. And this is what you got to know. But read a little bit more. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Oh, so this was supposed to be anchoring your soul out. When you drifting away from the Lord, that anchor for to catch you. Uh-oh, no, I got to get back with Jesus. Yes, sir. I'm too far. If I'm going straight, Lord, bring me back. I know my walk ain't going to be perfect, Lord, but help me to stay on the path. I need help. I ain't too proud to say it, Lord. Yes, help me, Father. Because I can't make it without you. Yes, sir. But go ahead and finish. What did you say? Where you at now? 20? 19. Go ahead and read. Both sure and steadfast, and which entered into that within the veil. Because, you know, behind the veil, you know, the veil of the temple has been ripped, right? But Jesus entered into the holies of holies in the heaven itself to appear in the presence of God for us. Because, hey, a lot of times, see, the Father is eat, don't, do not jive. Jesus don't either. Don't get me wrong. But the Father be ready to bust you up. But Jesus said, no, Lord. So wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. One more chance. This guy, you know, it's rough. That flesh is rough. Lord. I had that flesh on. See, the father ain't never had that flesh on. Yeah. But Jesus, that flesh is rough, Lord. Remember, I told you to let this cup pass from my hand. Please. You know, the whole creation would have been lost. But he said, not my will, Lord, your will. That flesh will get on you. You hear what I'm saying? Give him another chance. Let me work with him a little. Let me work with her a little bit. I can bring him to life. Father, listen to Jesus. Okay, go ahead. And what Jesus tell the Father, now, if he don't change, I will do it. Ain't that something? But go ahead and read. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, uh -huh. even Jesus, made in the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Because that, that's what priests used to be on the night, the order of Melchizedek. He was the one that showed up in Genesis with them same two that Jesus Bread had. and what wine. Was Bread and wine. He is entered into heaven, and he's making intercession. To God for us. Don't, don't, don't kill him. I know race. He's one of these craziest cat I've ever seen. But just give him a little time. Let me work with him. And thank God for that. Because we need an assessor. But now, let's keep moving now. Let's go to Ezekiel 18. Because let's see what's on the Lord's mind. What do he want for us? Let's go to Ezekiel 18, child. But see, people, this is, see, all week long, Lord, give us six days to do our thing. But he said, just give me one day. Come spend some time with me, and I'll show you what's going on. And then, because I, I got a gift, I want to give you. But it's a certain way you got to get it. Ezekiel 18, we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. I see y'all there going to sleep. My man trying to play, but he ain't sleeping. <laughs> yeah, just like, hey, man. He ain't heard a word out there. <laughs> but now, nah, Ezekiel, I'm not talking about you, brother. But uh, Ezekiel 18, I'm not talking about that brother's on every word. Ezekiel 18 and 29, what did it say? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Ooh. I thought the soul couldn't die, people. The Lord said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Sister showed me that one time. You, the soul can't die. I said, read that 20th verse. I looked around. She said, ooh, look at the time. I, 
I've got to get out of here. I, say, I, I know you will. That's all. I'll talk to you later. But now, keep reading, bro. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Go ahead. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. And see, we got to pay attention to these fathers and sons and families because every man has got to stand for his own sin. Go ahead and read now. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Uh-huh. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be shall be upon him. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have co committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, uh -huh. he shall surely live. He shall not die. Ain't that beautiful? Lord, he, he don't care what you have done. If you turn, Lord said he'll forgive you. You shall live. What kind of life he talking about? Eternal life. Go ahead and read. All his transgressions that he have committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. Uh huh. And his righteousness that he have done, he shall live. And see, the Lord is so sweet, he said he won't even mention it to you. Ain't that so? Boy, our flesh catch you wrong, and they get mad, they gonna mention it every time. See, that's the reason why you so. I thought you forgive me for that. <laughs> every time I turn around, you bringing it up. So that I know why. That's the reason why. I said, wait a minute now. But the Lord said, I ain't gonna mention it. Just do right. I won't even speak on it. Go ahead and read. Have I, this, this is what got me right here. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? The Lord don't want the wicked to die. Go ahead. Say of the Lord of God. Go ahead. And not that he should return from his ways and live. That's what he wants you to do. This is repentance. Turn from your ways and live. But he can't make you do it. You, he gave you the choice. He made you a free agent. But he let you know, turn from your ways and live. You don't have to die. If you want to die, it's because you want to. God don't want you to die. Go ahead and read. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness. Uh oh. The righteous turn away from his righteousness. Go ahead. And committeth iniquity. Uh huh. And doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth. See, he ain't just got to turn from his right because you know you're going to slip and fall. But now you're going to turn from your righteousness and now you're doing all the abominations that the wicked do. You ain't, repentance ain't in your mind at all. Mm. I mean, you ain't slip and fall. You, you, you done went headlong crazy. <laughs> Lord said, uh uh, I'm going to get you for that. Go ahead and read. Shall he live? No. Go ahead. All his righteousness that, that he have done shall not be mentioned. Now, in this case, your righteousness won't be mentioned. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read. In his trespass that he have trespassed, and in his sin that he have sinned, in them shall he die. And that is the truth. But look what Israel say now, 25. Yet, yet you say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? See, your ways are unequal. That's the way people think it on this first day of the week because they ain't getting taught the word. I'm not saying that the people in the church on Sunday, everybody's going to pay. The Lord's people is in there too. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. They just got to come out of there and yeah. get to the truth. But the thing, they thinking that you can do whatever you want to do and still walk in God's kingdom. The Lord said, no. You got to do what I tell you to do. Listen, but this is what the Lord wants you to do. Skip down to verse 30 and continue. Y'all read the rest of this on your own time. I'm just trying to keep this thing moving for time. Sake. I don't want to have you here until 6 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, it's just 2.25. Okay. <laughs> no. Three. I don't know what time it is. I, that's something wrong with that clock back there. I think it's just about 1.15. Mm. But now, Ezekiel 18 and 30. Go ahead and read. Therefore I would judge you. O house of Israel, uh -huh. everyone according to his ways. That's right. When he's talking to the house of Israel, he's talking to everybody. One law for the homeborn as well as the stranger. Yes, but go ahead and read now. Say of the Lord God. What did he tell you to do? Repent uh -huh. and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. Because iniquity is going to ruin you. What's the wages of sin, people? Death. And that is ruin. But what did the Lord say? 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Uh -huh. Whereby you have transgressed. Go ahead. And make you a new heart. And a new spirit. A new way of thinking, people. Right. Got to get a new way of thinking. Go ahead and read. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Why do you want to burn forever in the lake of fire? Mm. Where well, the fire is not quenching, the flesh worms is eating on you. Forever. <laughs> I mean, it ain't no break, man. You well in there. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't go there. And you don't want to go there. If anybody got some sense. You don't want to go there, but if you don't keep them commandments, that's exactly. You know what they say? The lake of fire, the last stop for sinners. Keep reading. For I have no pleasure in them 
in the death of him that dieth. What? Go ahead. Saith the Lord God. But what do he want? Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. But who got to turn you, people? So. Turn yourselves and live. This is what it is. And don't let nobody fool you. But let me show you something about the wicked people. See, sometimes we, we sin against the Lord, but I don't really want to put us in the category of the wicked. Because let me show you what the wicked be thinking. Let's go to Job 20. See, the Lord got examples all through the book, so you'll know. I don't want to do that. I'm going to stay away from that. But uh, let's see what the wicked be doing. Job 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Let's see what we're talking about now. Job 20. And see, when you, when, 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 you, uh, when you get home, you get some quiet time. Bust out your notes and go over this again. All the lessons you've been taught. And let the Lord expand your mind like he did Solomon. Job 20 and verse 1, what does it say? Then answers so far, the air... The Amathite, uh -huh. he said, therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer. Go ahead. And for this I make haste. Go ahead. I have heard the, heard the check of my reproach. Uh-huh. And the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. That's right, because uh, Job was saying the thing, but the Lord said, let me tell you something about the wicked, Job. Go ahead and read. Knowest thou not of, of this of old, since man was placed upon earth? Since man was placed upon the earth, what happened? That the triumphing of the wicked is short. What? And the joy of the hypocrite. But for a moment. So no matter how glorious you live in, if you in wickedness, how long is it going to last? Sure. Now let's look at for a moment or for everlasting. Which way I want to be in? Everlasting. This is what you got to look. He said it's only for a moment. Go ahead. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, uh -huh. his head reach into the clouds. I mean, you can get high as you possibly can. You riding on the clouds. I'm this. I'm that. Like I heard Jay-Z say, you know, I don't care. Jesus is joking. God blah, blah, He just talking about the Lord. But he better enjoy that time. Mm. But all I can say, but what did the Lord say? Seven verse. Mm -hmm. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. Uh -huh. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? And I'm going to tell you something. When the last time you seen your own dung? <laughs> Unless you done did it out there outside, outside somewhere. But Lord, he's going to be just like his own dung. You won't see him no more. Mm. Where is he? Go ahead and read. He shall fly away as a dream. Uh-huh. And shall not be found. Yes, sir. Yeah, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Hey, a vision of the night is strong, but when you wake up, it's gone. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and read. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Uh-huh. Neither shall his place any more behold him. That's right. So you ain't got to worry about it. Look at, I think old John back there in the kitchen, man. No, no. Once he's gone, he ain't it's coming back. If somebody's back there, it ain't John. But go ahead and read. His children shall seek to please the poor. Uh -huh. and his hands shall restore their goods. Because sometimes you just do so much wrong that you're trying to do something good to clear your, clear your conscience. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, uh -huh. which shall lie down with him in the dust. Ooh, now the Lord said when you get baptized, your past sin is wiped away, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're wicked, your sins lie down in the grave. Yes, sir. Ain't that something? And when you stand before the Lord, guess what will be standing right next to you? Your sin. Because you didn't repent. Mm. You didn't get rid of them. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know about y'all. I do not want to stand before the Lord without repenting. Not me. But now, be a little verse. Be a little, little more. 12. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth. Oh, yeah. When you're doing it, wickedness is sweet. But when it's over. Though he hide it under his tongue. Uh-huh. Though he spare it and forsake it not, uh -huh. but keep it still within his mouth. Yes, sir. You loved it so much. The Lord said, this is what I'm going to do for you. Go ahead. Yet his meat and his bones is turned. It is the gall of asps within him. And asps is a poisonous snake, people. That's what it's going to do to you. It's going to be inside you. But keep reading now. He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. Uh -huh. God shall cast them out of his belly. Yes, sir. Go ahead. He shall suck the poison of asps. Uh -huh. The viper's tongue shall slay him. The viper's tongue shall slay him. Go ahead and read. He should not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and the butter. What is the floods and the brooks of the honey and butter? If you right, brother. Mm -hmm. He won't say it. But we got to get there. I want to be able to bend over and stick my hand in some of that honey and say, man, we made it. You want some, bro? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, sister, you hear me? I got to get there. Yes, Ain't no other way. But now, 
Let me see now, people. We're winding down. Y'all want me to keep running? Can I finish this? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Let me see now. All right. Well, let's go to Matthew 24, chapter. We're going to keep moving. I'm going to quit doing so much talking. Matthew 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 45. Matthew 24 and 45. Matthew 24 and 45. Twenty-four and forty-five. Okay, go ahead. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, uh -huh. whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, uh -huh. to give them meat in due season? See, all you gotta do is hold on. Your, your season's gonna come. He gonna give you your meat. Gonna give you your reward. But you gotta get it in due season. Not when you want it when the Lord give it to you. But go ahead and read. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Also, when he come and find you doing his will, guess what? Got your reward because you would do it until when is the end when I die or till Jesus, Jesus comes, whichever one comes first. But go ahead and read, Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. What the Lord gonna make you rule over? And do you know how many goods the Lord's got there? Do you know what he's saying? You will be very God, you will have control over the elements and everything. Man, it's too hot, so I'm back up a little bit. <laughs> Man, hit me with a little rain. I just want to cool off a minute. I mean, you got control. Bring me that east wind from the south, man, and hit me one time. I got this new gown on. It's cold blood. But hey, you call in the shot. You is God. You understand what I'm saying? You could create your world, put some people on it. Ain't no tell. It ain't, it's no limit. You know what the book says? I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love. Ain't that something? This is what we talking about. He said, I'm going to make you ruler over all his household. What verse are you? 48. Go ahead and read. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, uh, my Lord, delay of his coming. See, that's why the Lord said, after you have done the will of God, you have need of patience. And I've been doing this a long time. The Lord still ain't got to me yet. He's going to get around to you. This be cool. That's when that patience got to kick in. You got to wait on the Lord. Go ahead and read. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants uh -huh. and to eat and drink with the drunken. Go ahead. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. Ooh, he gonna come in a day when he looketh not for him. Go ahead and read. And in the hour that he is not aware of. Ooh, go ahead. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Uh-huh. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that's that everlasting life you don't want to. But either we gonna be in God's kingdom or we gonna be man and gnashing our teeth. But now, Go back to 13, because the Lord sent us a message. This uh, 13th verse in this same chapter. 24 and 13. What did that say? He leaving us one thing to remember. What is that? But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Remember that, people. Don't let nobody fool you. I'm saved now. I said, yeah. Is the end here? No. Well, then you ain't saved. Yes, sir. Next question, please. But now, let's go to Revelation 3. We're going to pick it up at verse 5, because we're trying to get out of here now. Revelation 3 and verse 5. 3 and 5. Revelation 3 and 5. Revelation 3 and 5. Okay, go ahead. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Yes, sir, that white raiment. See, people put that white, they get all white, you know, they all out on the street. The Lord ain't talking about no white dress or no white suit. He talking about the righteousness of the saints. That's the God that you're supposed to have on. Go ahead and read. And I would not blot and I would not blot out his name, blot out his name out of the book of life. Yes, sir, because if your name ain't blotted out the book, that means you in there. Yes, sir. And you're gonna get that reward. But what verse are you? Five, middle of five. Go but ahead. I, but I will confess his name before my father uh -huh. and before his angels. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And he, and he that have an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit said unto the church. What the Word is saying to you. We are the church, right? Yes, but now, let's go over to verse 20. Let's see what the Lord else he has promised. Revelation 29. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 15. 20 and 15. Because we're trying to show you how this thing goes. We ain't got too much for the people. I know the children, y'all been doing good. You ain't been wrestling. You've been paying attention. Y'all really impressed me today. 
Thank God for you children and you sound good. I really do. I love those songs. Revelation 20 and 15. Okay, go ahead, brother. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What? So if you ain't in the book, where you going to be, people? Ain't that so? And you don't want to go there. Flip over to Revelation 21 and 8. Eighth verse. What did it say? Let's see who's going to be in that lake of fire. Go ahead and read. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with, with fire and brimstone, uh -huh. which is the second death. Oh, that's the second death? The lake of fire. See, people, you be afraid of the first death. The first death ain't nothing but sleep, people. Lord, so you can wake you from that every night. You've been doing it all your life. You don't be scared. Oh, man, I'm going to go to bed. I'm scared. Nah, nah, you do it every night. And that's what the first death is asleep. But that second death is eternal. That's the one you got to watch out for. That's the one you can't come out of. And he said, it is the lake of fire. And who's going to go there? He named them. The fearful. That means they ain't got no fear of the law. The unbelieving, they didn't believe. The problem, they're doing everything up under the sun. I mean, I looked up, I see, I ain't going to say that because the kids is in here. Murderers, hormones, sorcerers, idolaters. But y'all know what I'm talking about, that Sodom and Gomorrah thing. Mm -hmm. Nationwide TV, two guys, you know what I'm saying? No, no. Uh-uh, something is wrong. The whole earth is out of course. But now, let's see how the Lord going to do it, though. Let's go to St. John 5. And I'm going to tell you people, watch it, you because they're trying to teach them that foolishness in school. Yes, sir. That is cool and all that. You've got to check your teeth. Let them know what's happening. Now, now, boy, let me tell you something. Yeah. Don't do that. St. John 5. You're going to pick it up at verse 28. We're trying to get out of here now. St. John 5 and 28. When you get it, go ahead and read. Marvel not at this. Uh huh. For the hour is coming. In the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Oh, you mean tell me, so if you died in the Lord, you kept it, and you endure to the end, you died, all that's in the grave going to hear his voice. And what they going to do when they hear it? And shall come forth. Uh-huh. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Mm. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. See, it's only two places, people. Which one are you going to? You got to ask yourself. You are going to determine where you're going to spend eternity at. This is what this life is all about. This is a testing ground. To see where you're going to spend eternity at, people. Everlasting life in God's kingdom or everlasting damnation. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. We're walking out of here now. I didn't mean to keep you this long, but hey, sometimes time is calling for a little longer. So we need healing people. You know what I'm saying? We need to be sitting down having a family talk. We got work to do. First Corinthians 15. And we're going to read side of 20 verse, and we're going to do some skipping. First Corinthians 15, verse 20. What did it say? But now is Christ risen from the dead uh -huh. and become the first fruits of them that slept. What do you mean, become the first fruits of them that slept? First to die and raise. And, and the forever. one that was in the dead. That one was dead, right? He was the first fruits. But then we're going to see. Keep reading now. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. That's right. Go ahead. For as in Adam all die. Because in Adam everybody had seen. Go ahead. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. That's right. See, the Lord talked about in 2 Corinthians 5 that how he was under the administration of death. He was talking about Adam's thing. All the way till Jesus came, we was going to die, every last one of us. But the Lord freed us. That was the administration of death, but he came to give you a shot at that eternal life. But keep reading right. For every keep man... But every man in his own order. Uh -huh. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. They that are Christ at his coming. But now, uh, skip down to 35. What did it say? But some, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up? Uh huh. And with what body do they come? And see, this is a mystery. Hey, how are they raised up? What body do they come? Hey, that same body that went down in the grave is the same one that's coming up. So, hey, if you look like you look, deal with it because that's the way you look when you're going to come up out of the grave. It's going to be that same body. But it ain't going to be flesh and blood. It's going to be a spiritual body. And when you got that spiritual body in God's kingdom, you is beautiful. I don't care how you look. You hear what I'm saying? You done made it. But keep reading. Thou fool. Uh-huh. That which thou sowest is not quickened 
except it die. It ain't brought to life unless it dies. So you got to die in order to be brought to life. You got to have this body so that he can give you that other body, which is that spiritual body. But let's see how he's going to do it now. Uh, skip down to verse 53 and continue. At 52, because he's showing you a uh, mystery. 51 said what? 51, behold, I show you a mystery. Uh -huh. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Hey, that's a secret right there. We all ain't got to die, but we got to all be changed. Because some of us going to live right up to the coming of the Lord, and it's sure. going to be changed in a moment or two. Ain't that something? But some of us going to die. But the thing about dying is Isaiah told me in 26, we ain't going to read it, but you make a note of it, that uh, you're going to be asleep. But he said, enter into thy chains as it were for a moment. Because you ain't got no conscience of time. When you sleep, it's just like Adam. He been asleep all, almost 7,000 years. But when the Lord wakes him up, it'd be like he just nodded off for a minute. Damn, I must have, I must have nodded off. <laughs> ain't that something? 7,000 years. It's just like you come home from work, you're so tired. He said, I'm just going to sit here for a minute. And when you, man, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. When you, Damn, what happened? <laughs> I got to get up and go back to work. But you ain't had no conscience of time. This is what the Lord is letting you know. Y'all excuse my friends, but I'm, I'm talking to my brother and my sister. Is that my right? Yes, sir. <laughs> but listen now. Go ahead, 52. What does it say? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh -huh. at the last trump, go ahead. for the trumpet shall sound, uh -huh. and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Incorruptible. That means you can't corrupt no more. Don't you know when we came out of our mother's womb, that was your first step to corruption. You was walking, we walking our way down to the grave, people. That's why you're getting older and older. You lay in there, then you get up like me. Two days, I'll be 60 years old. I'm getting closer and closer to the grave, no matter if I want to go or not. <laughs> I mean, it was just like yesterday, I was robust, young bro, just come in, just want somebody. I wish your cat move or say. <laughs> but now, now I'm sneaking in the back door. <laughs> hey, they, they, Cool and everything. Hey, I'm getting older. I'm corrupted. I mean, come on. It's a fact. You can't fool. I mean, you can take all the dye and the, the, the jelly, the fruits. And I don't care what. you going to get old and die. <laughs> don't fool yourself. And, you know, people telling me all oh, pops. You know, you know, I look at you. You're a young boy. I used to say the same thing. But I tell you, that thing will come up on you before you know it. It's like I laid down one know and woke up gray with I said, What where this old dude come from? <laughs> Out of nowhere. Out of a moment. I said, Whoa. The Lord said, Man's life is like a shadow. Man that's born of a woman is a few days in full of trouble. That's why I know we ain't got no lot of time because we our life ain't nothing. You see what I'm saying? This is what the Lord is letting you know. But what verse is yet now? In the 52. Go ahead and read. And we shall be changed. Yes, sir. We got to be changed. And then what can, what's going to be happening? Go ahead and read. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption. Uh huh. And this mortal must put on immortality. Immortality is that eternal life. Go ahead. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, uh huh. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. What's going to happen? Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written Death is swallowed up in victory. Because you can't die no more. And it ain't the reason why you ain't dying no more, because it ain't no more sin. Because that's what brought death in for sin. But now, we walking on down now, people. I just want to let you know one thing. We got two more scriptures. Titus, the second chapter. Yes, sir, that old age will come up on you for you. No, I remember I didn't even know I was getting that old. I, I used to work for this school, delivering milk for these schools, right? I'm coming in with a big thing of, of milk for the children, right? And the children out front playing. They say, hey, they, hey, let's get, let's get out of the way and let that, that old guy get by. So I pulled to the side. <laughs> and he the shot was looking at me and be like, I said, what's wrong? He said, man, we talking about you. I said, no, man, come on. I said, oh, no. <laughs> My thing is off. I had to throw them out and gave his shoes in the river. <laughs> they, I can't use them no more, people. <laughs> Titus 2. Uh, Titus 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Man, we, if we can't have a little fun, we're doing the same, man. Come on. We're going to be crazy. <laughs> Titus 2 and verse 11, people. 
two and eleven. What did it say, bro? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. How many people did it appear to? Oh. So now if you didn't get it, it's because you turned it down. That's why he tell you, St. John, this light lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. When he's talking about man, he's talking about woman too. Lord, run that truth by you. Whether you receive it or not, that's between you and the Lord. But go ahead and read now. Teaching us that, deny ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world. In this present world. We got you. Go ahead. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we're looking for, people. And that's when we know we're going to get our reward. Because he said he come and his reward is with him. But now let's go to 2 Timothy 4. And this is it. This is going to be the last scripture. And I didn't mean to keep you that long. But a lot of times it's not my will, it's the Lord's will. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 1. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 1. Okay, what does it say? I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Oh, that's when he's going to judge, man. His appearing in his kingdom. This is when he's going to be judged. The quick is the living, and we know what the dead is. Keep reading. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's what you're supposed to do. You ain't supposed to argue the Bible. Hey, look here. I said, what is all this whole armor for? The helmet and the sword and the <laughs> Yeah, you ain't supposed to argue the Bible. I'm just supposed to stand up and we going to talk to each other? Mm -hmm. No, it's war. Mm -hmm. But look here. Go ahead and read. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And the time is here, people. Go ahead. But after their own lust. Shall they heat to themselves teachers having itching ears? And that's what people is going. They're going from church to church. If their preachers sound good and he like, they'll go there. But a lot of them ain't looking for the truth as yet. But keep reading. And they should turn away their ears from the truth. They're going to do what? Turn away their ears. Go ahead and read. And shall be turned, it, and shall be turned into fables. Oh, let's see what a fable is. Let me see. Christmas. Easter. Halloween. All oh, this is you got nothing to do with God. But keep reading now. Watch thou in all things. That's right. Endure afflictions. Do afflictions because you got to go through some stuff, people. You just ain't going to think Jesus going to get whooped on, beat on, and whipped down, and kicked, and hung on a cross, and we just going to ease into the kingdom. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Everybody is going to get a scratch on their nose for this thing. Goes. <laughs> but but you can get through it with Jesus. But go ahead and read, brother. Do the work of an, an evangelist. That's right. Make full proof of thy ministry. That's right. And one thing I've seen in my little time in this thing that I've been everywhere and nobody's ever been able to stand before this word is Jesus. But sixth verse, what did he say? This Paul, now he said, I did the thing, Lord, I did what you told me. And this is what he said. Go ahead. For I am now ready to be offered. Uh-huh. And the time of my departure is at hand. Because of Job, tell you 14, that a man is born of a woman. A few days are full of trouble, but the time is set. He can't go past. The day you're born, the day you're going to die is already established. Keep reading. I have fought a good fight. That's what you got to do. I have, I have finished my course. Uh huh. I have kept the faith. You got to keep the faith. That's what you got to do. Don't never let go of the faith. Go ahead. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Yes, sir. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Uh huh. And not to me only. Woo, I'm glad he said that. Not to him only. <laughs> Hopefully we can be in that same number. You hear me? Go ahead and read. But to all them also that love his appearing. So look here, people. From the heart, I hope you looking for the appearing of Jesus. Yes, sir. And hey, if I don't see you no more, I will see you then. Be God here. And I thank you for your time. I hope somebody learned something. Give yourself a great big round of applause. I want to thank you for some excellent yeah. reading, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> Couldn't have did it without the Lord and you, my Yes, sir.